Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. We have four stories for you this week. DJI launches the new Zenmuse L3 LiDAR, which is kind of impressive. A drone maker trade secret lawsuit. That's, uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> and then new products from Autel, kind of a surprise. And then a wildfire from an experimental drone crash. Lots of good stuff this week, let's get to it. And first up, we have, as expected, DJI launching the Zenmuse L3. Now, this thing is a beast. It boasts a detection range of up to 950 meters, which is 3,100 feet. And that's more than double what they had at 450 meters on the L2, which is the previous payload. Now, I'm gonna skip some of the crazy specs because you can go and look them up if you're into LiDAR. Otherwise, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to someone who's not. But it achieves the, the all of this tech with a 1,535 nanometer wavelength LiDAR, even on objects that have just 10% reflectivity. Now, the system also has, and listen to this, this is crazy, a dual 100 megapixel 4 3rd CMOS RGB sensor. This is five times an increase from the L2, which had one single 20 megapixel sensor. Uh, and then with the uh, three centimeters of ground sampling distance at 300 meters, uh, that's almost a thousand feet, uh, you'll get basically ultra detailed maps and models. Now DJI is claiming that they have a vertical accuracy of three centimeters at 120 meters uh, of flight altitude and then 10 centimeters at 500 meters of altitude. Now this whole system is 1.6 kilogram, 3.5 pounds, and it's compatible with the 300, the 350, and the 400 uh, Matrice series. Uh, if the specs hold up in the real world, uh, I'm gonna be very impressed. This is, uh, this is something, well, again, DJI at it, doing something crazy. Next up, we have some legal drama in the US drone industry. A federal judge in Utah has handed an early victory to Vector Defense, which is a drone company that was co-founded by George Mattis. He's the former chief technology officer at Red Cat Holdings. He's also the founder of Teal Drones, who's since left. Now, Red Cat, which owns Teal Drones, uh, filed a lawsuit against him and also against Vector Defense, claiming that he stole some trade secrets and sabotaged the business before leaving to start his own company. Now, Red Cat was also seeking a temporary restraining order to stop Vector from manufacturing drones or competing in the industry for the next year. But the judge denied a request stating that Red Cat failed to provide evidence to support the claim and also that the assertion were merely speculative. Mattis founded Teal Drone when he was in high school, sold it to Red Cat in 2021, and then later left in 2024 to co-found Vector Defense. Red Cat alleged that Mattis used his position to give his new company an unfair head start. Mattis countered that Vector's drones, like their single-use FPV hammer drone, for example, doesn't even compete with Red Cat's product. Now, this this is a significant early win for Vector Defense, uh, which recently landed a major contract with the US Special Operations Command. We're gonna keep an eye on this one. It's been going on for a while, and uh, yeah, I think the case is still developing. Third, this week, kind of interesting, Autel Robotics has quietly released several new products. And this came from uh, Joe Scaparotto, uh, who is the uh, Director of Business Development at Autel. He announced several of the new products on LinkedIn, uh, including the Autel Explorer, which is a small drone slash RC car hybrid that is desi designed for a GPS denied environment indoors. Uh, they also announced the, well, longer awaited Evo 3, which has a mechanical shutter. Also so they announced the Evo Pioneer 150, which is a ground robot uh, with wheels, basically like a cart with wheel, if you want to think about it this way, uh, that has a 200 kilogram payload. Also the Evo Nest 2, which is a docking station that would hold the Evo 3, the new platform, and then the Skyfin Interceptor. Now, these announcements comes with very limited details at the moment. Uh, none of these products are actually on the Autel's uh, website. So details on pricing, specs are pretty limited. Uh, but hopefully we're going to see these products come to the United States. And then uh, yeah, we can even test some of them, uh, some of them out. Uh, the uh, Evo 3, I think, is really interesting. Years, years after the Evo 2, which was kind of a beast and a, a great platform to begin with. Uh, can't wait to see what this new one looks like. And then finally this week, a story that serves as kind of a serious reminder about the risks that come with our industry and flying, well, 
experimental drones, in this case, an experimental uh, remotely piloted aircraft with a six foot wingspan crashed in a rural area in Calhan, uh, Colorado, and that sparked an 83 acre wildfire. According to the Tri-County Volunteer Fire Department, they said that the crash itself started the fire and then the uh, lithium battery significantly intensified the blaze. That's a quote, uh, making it harder to fight the fire. Now it spread quickly because it was dry and windy conditions, uh, starting a mandatory evacuation and then also destroying one small outbuilding. Uh, thankfully, the multi-agency response was able to get the fire under control. And uh, in just about an hour, the sheriff's office determined that the crash was accidental Accidental. Uh, they did not release the name of the company that was conducting the experimental flight. This is a good reminder for all of us that uh, we should be extremely careful, especially when flying uh, in windy and dry condition, and that battery fire do happen after a crash. And then on Post Flight This Week, that's the premium community show where we share our opinions. We're gonna be covering all of these stories and then also some uh, new non-flying DJI product. So we'll see you on Monday for the live and then you have a great week and uh, fly safe. Thank you.